Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. A girl encounters a giant that's tens of meters high, and it takes her to its country, where she realizes there are man-eating giants, and she helps the humans fight back. The movie begins late at night in an orphanage somewhere in London. The matron from the orphanage goes to lock the door but notices a magazine that was dropped alongside the mail at the foot of the door. She picks up the magazine and forgets to lock the door. Meanwhile, a little girl named Sophie, who is hiding under her blanket at the stairs, sees this and waits for the matron to retreat completely into her room before she goes to lock the doors by herself. After locking the doors, she walks up to the clock and moves the minute hand to make it 3 a.m. While doing that, she tells us that 3 a.m. is the witching hour when only she is left awake, but the matron thinks it's midnight, while the other girls in the orphanage think it's 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Afterward, she walks to the matron's desk to arrange the mail. While doing that, she hears a noise from outside and quickly goes to check. Outside, Sophie spots a few drunk men making noise in the quiet streets of London. She takes it into her own hands to reprimand them, reminding them that the children are trying to sleep, and she promises to call the cops if the men don't leave immediately. She then turns off the street light and shuts the windows while the men decide to leave instead of getting in trouble with the cops. While Sophie returns to her room, a strange shadow is seen walking past, which Sophie doesn't notice. Once inside the room, where the other children are fast asleep, Sophie covers herself with her blanket, puts on her glasses, and turns on her torch to continue a book she had been reading. A few seconds into her reading, she hears the matron approaching the room and quickly turns off the flashlight to avoid getting caught. After the matron leaves, Sophie resumes reading her book, and while reading, she hears some noise coming from the outside, which startles her. Sophie remembers that it is never good to get out of bed, open the curtains or look out the window at night, but she goes against everything anyways. Thankfully, it was just the neighborhood cats playing outside that toppled over a trash can. While Sophie is still staring at the cats, she sees a giant hand that picks up the trash can and tries to reach for the lid. Then, Sophie makes eye contact with a scary-looking giant and quickly rushes back into the room to hide. She reminds herself one more time about not jumping out of bed, opening the curtains, and not looking out the window, and just when she's about to turn around, the giant sticks his hand through the window and abducts her along with her blanket and book. Racing through London, Sophie's blanket curls up into something like a bag from which Sophie can see the different tricks the giant uses to avoid being spotted by other humans. Tricks like pretending to be a wall, covering a street light, being cargo at the back of a truck, and pretending to be a tree. The giant finally makes it out of London and into the countryside, where he keeps leaping and goes through a thick cluster of clouds that leads straight into giant country and into a cave, which appears to be his home. The giant hangs Sophie in her blanket from a tree and proceeds to start chopping a strange vegetable called a snozcumber to prepare himself dinner. While doing that, Sophie hops out of the blanket and climbs her way down to the window, where she tries to escape. The window is difficult to open, given her tiny size, but she puts more effort into it and gets it to open. However, she kicks a thimble on the table and dives for the catch instead. Thankfully, the giant doesn't hear her, so she grabs the thimble, as big as a bucket, and tries to go the other direction. When she bumps into his sewing tools, knocking them off the table and alerting the giant, he turns to her and tells her that she cannot go anywhere if she doesn't have wings. He then pushes the window, which knocks Sophie onto the pan he's holding. The giant continues making his dinner, and Sophie asks where she is. He tells her she's in giant country, but Sophie thinks no such thing exists. Suddenly, she is startled by a sound from outside, coming from fellow giants with names like Fleshlum Peter, Bone Cruncher, Man Hugger, Child Chewer, Gizzard Gulper, Meat Dripper, Maid Masher, Blood Bottler, and Butcher Boy. Sophie gets scared and pleads with the giant not to eat her, but the giant laughs at her, saying he doesn't eat humans. Sophie then reminds the giant that she was snatched away without consent, and the giant doesn't deny it. He points out that her parents must be worried about her, but Sophie tells him that she has no parents and that he had snatched her from an orphanage, which the giant didn't realize. However, Sophie tells the giant that she hated it at the orphanage because the matron was incompetent and that she had many rules which come with severe punishments if broken. The giant takes Sophie's side and hands her back her glasses, prompting Sophie to ask if the other giants are nice like him. But the giant tells her, as he serves himself a plate of weird-looking stew, that the other giant eats humans. Sophie is then perplexed as to why the giant abducted her. He then explains with his faulty grammar that if he had left her, she would have gone around telling people that she had seen a giant, which would, in turn, spike the curiosities of humans and lead to him being captured and put alongside the animals in the zoo. But Sophie promises that she wouldn't tell anyone, yet the giant doesn't believe her. Instead, the giant tells her they will be spending the rest of their lives here in giant country. While she's still talking about escaping, he tosses her blanket over her and takes her to his ship bed where he places her into the crow's nest, reminding her of the man-eating giants out there if she tries to escape. Sophie then gets angry and corrects all his grammatical errors, which makes him sad. 
She apologizes and notices a glowing object in a container he picked up. Sophie asks what the content is, and the giant tells her they are dreams. Sophie tells the giant that she doesn't dream as she has insomnia, and he picks up her book and starts reading it to her, which is a surprise to Sophie that the giant can read. While listening to the giant read, Sophie eventually falls asleep. The giant leaves to a room where he had all the dreams trapped. He then messes around with a few of the containers. Meanwhile, Sophie wakes up to the snore of the giant and escapes through the window and outside the cave. She tries to escape but is stopped by a sleeping giant, who tries to eat her. She sees her giant friend and pleads with him to help her, but he shuts his door, and she gets swallowed by the giant. Just then, she wakes up from her sleep only to realize that it is a dream. She immediately figures that the giant did it, so she tells him that he didn't have to make it that scary. The giant reminds her once again that she could get caught if the other giants see her. While talking, he grabs a drink named Frobscottle that seems to be fizzling the wrong way. Sophie points out the bubble saying that their bubbles go up, and the giant tells her that it will only lead to unpleasant burping. Sophie then explains that if the bubbles go down, it will also lead to an even more unpleasant gas. But the giant tells her that it's a symbol of happiness. He then proceeds to drink from the bottle and produces an explosive fart. Just then, another giant named Fleshlum Peter storms into the house, asking Sophie's friend whom he was talking to. Meanwhile, Sophie hides behind the frobscottle. Fleshlum Peter claims he has a splinter and wants to be treated immediately. While he is tending to the splinter, Fleshlum Peter detects a scent and asks Sophie's giant friend if he has gotten a new pet. The giant tries to distract Fleshlum Peter while Sophie jumps into the snozcumber on the table, unknown to them. Fleshlum Peter then starts sniffing around the table, looking for the foreign smell, when Sophie's giant friend offers the vegetable to distract him. Unfortunately, as Fleshlum Peter tries to take a bite of the vegetable, Sophie's giant friend sees Sophie's leg sticking out of the veggie. He quickly jumps to the rescue, reminding his friends that he prefers to eat humans, not vegetables. The giant then tosses the snozcumber to the ground and attempts to stomp on it when he is distracted again by Sophie's giant friend. He finally leaves, grabbing the bottle of frobscottle as he exits the house. The giant picks up the vegetable and places it on the table allowing Sophie to crawl out. He offers his hands to her, and Sophie climbs atop. The giant then takes her to the secret place where he keeps dreams. He helps her wash herself up and then offers her a variety of outfits to choose from. After getting dressed, the giant notices a red jacket Sophie has picked and asks her where she got it from. She then tells him that it was from the scraps he gave her. He looks sad at first, but when Sophie asks what is wrong, he tells her it's nothing. He then carries her in his palms, heading into the room, where Sophie asks what he does. The giant tells her she's asking for a big secret that he cannot tell. Sophie then insists since she would be staying with him forever anyway. The giant then tells her that he catches dreams and places her in a tree hollow space he had made specially for her, and Sophie immediately asks to come along, to which the giant declines, reminding her once again that she would get eaten by the other giants. However, Sophie thinks that if she remains here, she will definitely get eaten, but the giant still refuses. However, after much persuasion, he finally agrees to take her along. On exiting the cave, the giant tells her they must get past the sleeping giants without being caught. He carefully tries to sneak past them but is caught by Fleshlum Peter. Sophie falls off and rushes to hide in a nearby car, dropping her blanket. Meanwhile, the other giants turn Sophie's friend into a football and toss him around. Another idea for a game comes up, and the giant that is Sophie's friend grabs a car while the other giant grabs two vehicles, including the one Sophie is hiding in. Both giants head in the opposite direction. The one with the car that is Sophie turns the cars to roller skates while Sophie's friend is placed on top of the other car, which is pushed towards the direction of the incoming skater. Sophie sees that they will crash and quickly swerves the vehicle away from the other, avoiding a much worse scenario. The giants seem to be enjoying themselves and proceed to try another game when it suddenly starts to rain. Fearful of water, they all retreat, allowing Sophie's friend to get her and leave. After they leave, one of the other giants finds Sophie's blanket stuck to his leg, and after sniffing it, they realize that there is a human in giant country. On the other hand, Sophie and her giant friend walk through another thick cluster of clouds and emerge in dream country where it is already night. The giant then tells Sophie how he can hear what the stars, plants, and animals say to each other due to his large ears. He also tells her that he used to be called the big friendly giant and asks what he could call her before jumping into a lake. She introduces herself as Sophie, and he asks her to jump in. Both appear right side up after jumping into the lake, and not a single speck of water is to be seen dripping off their clothes. They are now in the section of dream country where the giant catches the dreams. He then encounters a particular stubborn dream that he has a problem catching. Sophie then helps him out, and finally, the giant catches the dream when it tries to approach Sophie. He hands it over to her and allows her to put it into a jar. The dream then draws Sophie's face. Afterward, the big friendly giant urges Sophie to go and catch more dreams. She does so after hesitating for a moment but soon comes in contact with a red one which the giant immediately takes away from her, claiming it to be a nightmare. 
Sophie gets curious and asks what the nightmare says, and the giant tells her, look at what you've done, there will be no forgiveness. The big friendly giant disappears, making Sophie panic and call out to him. Apparently, the giant left the lake, so he reaches in and pulls her out. On their way out, Sophie decides to call him BFG. Soon they arrive in London, where the giant stops at homes to distribute dreams. He asks for Sophie's opinion on whether to share a nightmare or a dream, but Sophie asks to make them all happy. BFG then distributes nice dreams to the family in the house. While doing that, BFG tells Sophie that he is as old as the earth itself and that giants don't have mothers or fathers. He also tells her he can hear children's hearts, including hers. And as they watch the little boy sleeping, BFG explains his dream about being friends with the President of the United States to Sophie which she enjoys. Later, BFG and Sophie both leave London, and on their way out, they spot the other giants leaving London. Apparently, they've been abducting and eating humans as well. Suddenly Sophie asks for her blanket and remembers that she must have left it a giant country, which starts to worry BFG. The scene then cuts to Sophie waking up from her slumber in front of the orphanage. She realizes she fell asleep and asks BFG why he is giving her a dream. She screams as she doesn't get a response, but he emerges and reminds her that she left her blanket in giant country, and the other giants know she was there. He tells her she isn't safe with him but she disagrees. BFG tells her about a boy who owns the jacket she is wearing. He says the boy saw him as he worked, and he took him to giant country. BFG tells her that the other giants found the boy in at him, and he blames himself. Sophie follows him and tells him she isn't scared, but he doesn't listen and walks away. Sophie returns to her room and whispers that BFG can hear even the quietest sounds. She gets an idea, walks to the balcony, and says she can feel his presence. She decides to jump off the balcony, but BFG catches and saves her. They return to giant country as Fleshlumpeter watches and enter his house. Sophie says they need a plan and hear Fleshlumpeter entering the lab. He uses a large umbrella to dodge the water, and Sophie hides. Fleshlumpeter enters with the other giants and shows BFG Sophie's blanket. He makes the other giants sniff the blanket, and they search for Sophie as they destroy the lab. BFG tries to stop them and says that giants used to be peaceful, but Fleshlumpeter says they're past those days. Sophie moves around the lab as the giants search for her. She makes her way into a room in a tree that belonged to the previous boy that stayed with BFG. Fleshlumpeter searches the room as she hides, and BFG gets angry. He gathers courage, picks up a hot metal rod, and uses it to pursue the giants. Fleshlumpeter takes the rod, but BFG takes a bucket of water and uses it to chase him out of the lab, calling him an insult to giants. Sophie sees a picture of the queen in the boys' room and gets an idea. Meanwhile, BFG walks around the wrecked lab while Sophie places the jacket on the bed. She leaves the room and talks to BFG as he says he speaks terribly. She tells him he speaks beautifully, and he gets excited. While BFG talks to himself, Sophie gets his attention and says she has a plan. She suggests they go to the queen and ask for her help. They work with undamaged dreams and conjure a dream they will give to the queen. BFG pulls out a nightmare and mixes it with different dreams that Sophie mentions. He mixes a piece of himself and Sophie into the dream. He places it in a jar labeled for the queen and continues mixing while Sophie narrates how she will appear on the queen's windowsill and BFG will appear and say he is her humble servant. BFG refuses, but we see them camouflage as statues in Buckingham Palace. They evade a guard and walk around the palace as BFG listens to everyone's breathing to know where the queen is. They arrive at her room, and he opens the window. BFG uses his special trumpet to put the nightmare in the queen's room, and it enters her. She dreams about the giants and wakes up in shock the following morning. Mary, the queen's maid, enters the room, and the queen tells her she had a nightmare. Mr. Tibbs, the queen's butler, enters with her breakfast, snaps his fingers, and the dogs rush out of the room. The queen says she dreamt that man-eating giants were taking children from their rooms and eating them. She mentions some of the giants' names, and a strange voice, which is Sophie's voice, reminds her of one of the names. Mary reads the newspaper and realizes that children are going missing. The queen fails to believe that giants are eating children, and she suddenly instructs Mary to draw the curtains. Mary screams as she draws the curtain, and they see Sophie. The queen says she dreamt that Sophie was on the windowsill, and Sophie says that BFG, who she calls her best friend, is hiding in the garden. Mr. Tibbs instructs guards to be alert, and the queen remembers her nightmare and realizes that Sophie and BFG need her help. Sophie makes the queen promise not to hurt BFG and calls for him, but he refuses, and the others begin doubting her. They ask her to get off the windowsill, but she refuses and screams, telling BFG to be brave. BFG emerges from the trees, and several guards surround him, and Sophie reminds her of her promise not to hurt him. She calls Mr. Tibbs, and he instructs the guards to stand down as his hands tremble in fear. BFG walks to the queen's window and says he is her humbug servant. He says he has come to assist her, and she suggests she change from her dressing gown. The queen contacts several people as Mary cleans and dresses Sophie. She enters the dining hall with Sophie while a butler directs BFG into the building. 
They sit and prepare to eat, and BFG sits on a chair that's placed on a piano. The butlers enter and use a ladder to reach the top of the giant table. They give him a shovel and a pitchfork as his cutleries. He tastes the food and exclaims that he won't eat snaz cumbers again. The butlers serve coffee, and BFG spits it out because he doesn't like it. B brings out a bottle of frobscottle from his bag and gives them as a gift. Mr. Tibbs informs the queen that the generals have been briefed, and they enter the room. She tells them they have only one chance of entering giant country. They present a map to BFG and ask him where the giant country is. He informs them that it isn't on the map and serves them frobscottle. They drink the drink while some people play bagpipes, and everyone farts. The queen stands up and says they are going to giant country. BFG runs out of London, and several helicopters follow him. He enters the cluster of clouds, and the helicopter radars begin to malfunction as they enter. They make it through the clouds and decide to wait while BFG and Sophie enter his house. Sophie asks BFG if he has a plan, and he retrieves the nightmare she caught. He says he will use it on the other giants. If it works, they will wake up trapped in remorse for all they've done. Sophie sees her dream in a jar with a heart's desire written on it. They sit outside as the giants sleep, and she asks about her dream. He tells her there will be a lot of success and a little despair in her life, and she will always remember her good deeds. BFG tells Sophie she will wake up but not in giant country because she has more dreams to catch. She asks if he will still be able to hear her, and he reminds her of his giant ears. Sophie holds his pinky with her hand and tells him it's time. BFG realizes he left his trumpet in the palace, and Sophie takes the nightmare. She runs to the sleeping giants, and Fleshlum Peter wakes up as she tries to open the jar. She breaks the jar, and the nightmares enter the giants, making them panic as they wake up. Fleshlum Peter prevents the nightmare from entering him and tries to hit Sophie, but BFG stops him. He grabs BFG as he tells him to stop, and Fleshlum Peter tries to hit him, but the army arrives. The army captures the giants as Sophie runs around the field to prevent being hit. BFG grabs her as Fleshlum Peter moves close to her, and he is carried away. Sophie narrates how the giants are taken far away to an isolated island and are dropped in the water before the island. They drop snaz cumbers and seeds as the giants' only food, and Sophie says they'll have to get used to it. Sophie gets adopted by Mary, and she wakes her up. She says she had a dream where she saw BFG leaping away. She could see his beautiful garden and inside his house, where he cooked better stew. She says she talks to him when lonely because he always listens. She tells him good morning, and BFG hears it from his house and smiles. The End